Lou, we get to be here after a win, but doesn't really feel like that. I uh, cope. Um, I think it. It's. I think we got a lot to get into. We got a lot to talk about, but um, it's a win, and that's important because in the NFL, it's just about W's and L's, and that's a W. It wasn't pretty. A lot to discuss and a lot to figure out, but it's a win. It's a division win. It's a home win. A lot of things there. Well, right before we hopped on, we just talked to my dad. He said they don't draw pictures on the... Yeah, on the scorecard. Well, they kind of do. A little bit, but that's okay. And there's some ugly pictures right now. Really highlights. They're not pretty. They're not all pretty. Mostly offense. Uh, yeah, I mean, how could you... I mean, there's a couple plays the defense looked really... The, the run... But besides that, the defense won you the game. They scored two touchdowns. They, you know, they, the defense won the game. So, yeah, there's a couple things on defense. We're going to talk about offense, defense. We'll split those conversations up. We're going to do winner, loser, maybe a little MVP action. Yep. But before we get there, I want to start where we left off last pod. Sure. You called it a must-win game. I, and and I've, I've now rephrased that as the week went I, on. I came along. Okay, but I, I'm you, you'll really like how I, I did posted this a year. story that said must win. You, you really like how I played this here. It's the closest to a must win game in week two that you can have. Well, there's a lot of teams in the NFL that feel like dead right now. The sure, Vikings feel dead. The Chargers we, feel dead. We read that stat: ten percent of teams that start zero and two do not make the playoffs. Imagine being Cincy right now. Zero and two, Cincy. Zero and two in the division. That's why I said what I said. So not only you don't want to be 0-2, obviously. You don't want to be 0-1 in the division, so it's a division game. You don't want to be 0-2 at home. It was a back-to-back home game. So you couple all those factors in. I was talking to my buddy yesterday. Think about it like this. We could be having this conversation that we're going to have about how just brutal the offense is and how tough that game was to watch as an 0-2 team. This would be a really dark pod right now. I told you, be a Bishop Zubik in the back. We'd be in all black with my rosary. <laughs> we, got, we got great responses on your Zubik. <laughs> well, I mean, he tweets about the Steelers all the time, too. It's funny. Um, but, yeah, so think about it from that perspective. Does he, ha- can we get him on the pod? I didn't know he does that. Oh, he, yeah, he tweets about the Steelers, yeah. He says stuff. Yeah. Wow, dream guest. Yes, oh, that'd be amazing. He'd sit right here next to me. Wow, all right. We might have to line that up. But think about that. So it's a conversation that we're going to have that's going to be a tough conversation, but it's a one-and-one conversation comparative to an 0-2, the sky's absolutely falling. If this was 0-2 right now, is Matt Canada already fired? Everything that I am read that I hear is that he will not be fired this year. However, I read an interesting tweet the other day that said, it is a strong possibility that if this continues, his role will be quietly diminished. He'll still stay the OC, but he probably won't be calling the plays anymore. Here's what I don't think people are factoring in. You can't install a new offense. So even if, and this is exactly to your point, even if Canada goes, it's not like we have like some big backup offense that's like, okay, plan B. It, there's no time. You, you, you can't bring in – there's not enough – well, we the, the Steelers work on this offense – on installing the offense all summer long, all training camp long. You can't do that in the middle of the season. What you could do if you're just worried about the play calling, the head coach can call the plays. I know nobody ever thinks that Mike Tomlin can do that, yet everyone gives him all this credit all the time. Mike, you could call the plays. It is it is an option. He's a defensive guy, so I doubt he He played can. receiver. But he was – I mean, it's I mean, weird. He can. He it's, can. It's weird. He's a defensive guy. He was a wide receiver. But he can call the plays, Sure. Um, I think Mike Sullivan would end up calling the plays because he's a quarterbacks coach. So there's two two things here. One, one I'm trying to really reach on, but one, could you theoretically, and I've seen this before, could you change your OC during the bye week after the Ravens game? It gives you two weeks. I just don't think it really matters. It's like you could defer the play calling. You're not getting a new offense. You could stop doing some things. We could stop doing this wonky motion every play that clearly doesn't work. It just causes false starts. I, I just that is super fresh, especially at home to take some of those penalties. Really, yes. really bad. You should never have a false start at home. And Chooks had two in the first quarter. It was horrible, especially being there. I was at the game, right in the fifty yard line. Sweet tickets. Shout out my boy Tommy O'Brien. Nice. 
it was pathetic to watch. It was like everyone was just face palming. The vibes were so low. It was like, oh great, we got to stop on defense. Here we go. But deserve, but deservedly so though. I mean, definitely. It got to the point where the Fire Canada chants were but going it, on. That's where we ended up. Okay, but to that point, is it one of those situations? And and, and it, uh, hockey does this all the time, where you can't change a you can't change twenty three guys on an NHL team, but you can change one coach. Is it that kind of situation where if they get rid of Canada or, for that matter, they just make someone else the play caller, does that bring in some type of renewed, refreshed energy? I'm glad you said that because I always think this about hockey. How many plays are you possibly drawing up in hockey? I don't pretend to be some hockey X's nose. Well, it's all, the me- it's all the mentality, though. It's all in the mentality. I was like, okay, you're bringing in a new energy, a new vibe, a new attitude. Maybe you're preparing different. But when, you, when, you got the, when, when the puck drops... So many different things are happening. You sure. can you can try to run a play, but a lot of it's freestyle. It's, Absolutely, it's like it's like running the break in basketball. Absolutely. So you know, hockey. I think you could change a coach pretty easily. In football, it's like you have to dial up a play. You know, a hundred times a game. Okay, but then for that sake, can you change? If you change the play caller, does that does that institute a new vibe or a new energy? I think it could I, help. Definitely can't hurt Frank at this point. No, I'm not saying I'm not in favor of it. I'm saying that Steeler fans should temper their expectations because not a whole lot can actually change. Here's the thing, and this is a hot take, and you guys are all going to think I'm crazy. We might have to, like, clip this one. There's one person out there that knows this playbook, that played for this playbook, that you could bring in that could just change the complexity of this whole season. Do you know who that person could be? I have a feeling I know. And that who would be more than willing, Mr. Ego, to come and change it. Wow. Just say it. Number seven, Benjamin Roethlisberger. He was the quarterback under Canada. He called his own plays. He knows the system. He'd be more than willing to do it. I'm just, it's a very, very bold hot take. I'm not saying it's even in the realm of possibility, but... It's a thought. It's a thought. The stage is set for Tom Ben. Tomlin's brought in old players before. The stage is set for Ben to come in and be... On the white horse. I mean, it is. You're so right about the ego thing. Yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing for Ben. If I was Ben, I'd have an ego too. But that's a nice setup. Could you imagine? The bar is very low right now. Very low. That's what I'm saying. And he knows the system. So you don't have to, to your point, you don't have to change it. Ben, it's an interesting dynamic. Ben, if He's you're out there, plays. if you're out there in Swickley right now and you're a little bored, just, just, give Tom, just give Tomlin a call. I'm just saying, I don't take it out of the realm of I am open to that idea. At this point, we everyone's seen the EPA chart on Twitter right now. Sure. And what does that mean, Frank, for all of us? Because it's your it's your efficiency, which means your actual chances of scoring a touchdown on a given play. Sure. Which is a realistic stat to look at. That's how you score points. It's so far in the other direction. The Steelers aren't even on the chart. It's like you actually had to extend the chart so far away that they're barely in the corner still. It's so bad. I mean, we'll put the graph up on the screen. Yeah, I was like, Johnny, can we insert that possibly? That'd be nice. It is so, so, so bad. So it's like, look, that's where you're at right now. That's what I'm saying. It's so low and so down, and it's so bad right now. The Steelers, you know the Steelers lead the league in three and outs. Lead the league in three and outs. I mean, yeah, it's... it's. Here's another stat we, for do you. Do we have more three and outs than first downs? We It might be even, because we had nine first downs. Johnny well, looked that up. But it's, well, it, seems like, it, it seems like, we said this last podcast, it seems like we don't even attempt to get a first down on first and second down. No. It's like it's like we're trying to like, all right, let's really deliver on third here. Right. You and then you're back up in a bad situation. Hole. No, it's like you, we're doing let, we'll have this whole offensive conversation right now. I think that works. So we're going to say so many nice things with the defense. But on first and second down, when we're running Najee outside, I get it, man. There's problems with the O-line. There's problems with the motion. There's problems when you can't freeze those linebackers to get the passing game going. It all works in a, a nice balance here. But 
when you've got the big power back like Najee Harris, who clearly doesn't look like he has a ton of burst. I mean, I think that's like the most popular take right now. It's hard to not sure. give that take. Why are you running him outside? It's it's ridiculous. But I'm very happy you brought that up. Because I have a little thought here. Everyone's talking about how Jalen should be RB1, okay? For X, Y, and Z. But this take, though, is a little bit different. I think Jalen is more effective right now and she'll get more carries because I think that the line is playing so bad right now that, A, they, can, they can't hold the block or they can't get the right assignment. Najee's kind of like a Le'Veon where he lets the play develop and then attacks it. But I don't think that's the right fit right now. Jalen gets the ball, hits the hole. And I think that works right now because they can't hold a block. They can't. Their assignments are all jacked up. So him hitting the hole before the play develops is actually letting the play develop more after the point of contact. Right. You can't get cute with it. Le'Veon right. also had one of the best lines in the league. Sure. Absolutely. But Najee's sitting there trying to wait for the play to develop to move forward, and it's not working right now because they can't block anybody. Jalen's getting the ball moving forward as fast as he can. He's not breaking it, but he's getting three, four yards that Najee's not getting right now. He's also really good on those dump offs. Fantastic. Fantastic. That stood out to me a lot. I mean, a couple of those plays were like, I mean, you saw him get open for the one that they broke off there. If you want to give Canada any credit at all, that looked like it was schemed up. Well, sadly, the situation is that those dump offs are, are one of the only things that are working because Kenny's getting pressure. They're going right past everybody. So he has to dump it off. All right, let's talk about Kenny. Let's talk about Canada. It's really, really easy to just dump everything on Canada. I'm not saying I don't want to do it, but Kenny's out there missing throws. Yeah, you have to have that conversation too. Just like we said in the preseason, you can't give Kenny all this praise without also saying Canada didn't dial up some nice stuff in the preseason. Now, the preseason is the preseason. I've already given my take on that. I think it's okay to put some stock in it because whether you're good or bad, you're going to be judged. So anyway, Kenny's out there missing throws, man. It's, it's, some of them are very easy throws. They're, we're not talking about 25-yard throws here. We're talking about slants. We're talking about outs, the stuff that he was supposed to be really good at. This is what I'll say to that. I'm not taking the blame, all the blame off of Kenny. I think there is some blame to be thrown around there. However, I think part of Kenny's problem in missing these easy throws is Matt Canada is not allowing him to get in any type of rhythm. Think about these slants and these outs. These are all rhythm throws. I'll just say, Canada has this offense so fucked up that no one can get in any type of rhythm. And I think that's affecting Kenny. Kenny's not the guy... Explain that, that in a little more detail. Okay, so these throws are not Big Ben throws escaping the pocket, um, pushing it down the field, ad-libbing. These are systematic, routine rhythm throws. All the slants to Pickens, the outs to Robinson and Austin, um, the post to Pickens where he scored. These are timing routes. And he's not allowing, Canada's not allowing to, the offense to have any type of rhythm or any type of continuity so I think that's affecting Kenny. Wouldn't you think that timing routes are conducive to rhythm? You know, it's timing, it's rhythm. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I think they all coincide together. Okay. And Canada's putting this offense in a situation where there's no rhythm to be had. Like you said earlier, there's no desire to do any of these plays on first and second down. Okay, I see what you mean. I, I also think the motion really hurts that. You, you've heard Roger talk, Aaron Rodgers talk about this for years where when he had to play in the post-McCarthy um, uh, system, McCarthy liked to open it up, West Coast offense, spread it out, let Aaron read the defense. Ben liked to do a lot of that too. Sure. So when you have that, it allows everyone to kind of just relax. You have more timing. You're not worried yes. about what motion you're doing pre-snap. You're not worried about, okay, you, you know we're going to have this illegal formation, and that obviously gets you very disjointed when you have these false starts and these pre-snap penalties. Absolutely. You can not, kind of just relax and trust yourselves. And focus on everything that needs to be done. 
all this other garbage, man, I, I definitely agree. That hurts the timing. That's not going to allow you to, you know, to get into a rhythm like you're saying. And putting something, to your point, putting something in motion, okay, what is that supposed to do? That is supposed to move the defense, shift the defense to where you think they're going to be. Rather, to your point, where everything's set up and you're just reading what you see pre-snap. That's one less thing Kenny has to think about. Yeah, man. I The really good quarterbacks hate it. That's what I'm saying. I, I can't. I can't put all the blame on Pickett. Hey, I'm not saying he needs to be better. He need, definitely needs to be better, but I think part of it is he cannot get in a rhythm. Part of it is you're trying to fool the defense, too, where it's like, you know... This to your point, the only people we're fooling is ourselves. Clearly, we're fooling ourselves, and we're not out here playing against um, Robert Morris. Okay? Right. This is the highest level. You're not going to fool these defenses, man. No. Like, you might... You might be able to scheme something up once in a while, but running a little jet sweep motion, and they've seen it before. You're oh, not, yeah. You're not fooling anyone with that. And they're faster, man. They're faster. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, winners on the offense, I think there's only one. Jorito? It's got to be Pickens. Yeah, has to be. It's got to be Pickens. He made that move. The stadium didn't feel as if we were going to get that play. It, sure. it really felt like we were going to grind it out and kick like six field goals. We didn't get into the red zone. Red zone. You know, if you want to count Pickens running through the red zone and scoring, okay, fine, we scored. We did not touch the red zone. We didn't snap the ball in the red zone all game. So he has to get – he's the only bright spot. Kenny made a good throw. It was a great read. But when he catches that ball, he does not have a clear path to the end zone. There's a guy in front of him. There's a guy to the side of him. And he makes it look like it's fifth grade flag football. Once they hit, didn't touch him. Once he hit that 40 yard line, he had an acceleration boost. Like some freakish acceleration boost where nobody touched him. And thank God he scored because I was really not looking forward to him sulking and being the diva wide receiver. I, th- I still think that's an issue I touched in the last podcast, but. I mean. I, I just, I'm just really happy we don't have to deal with it again. Yeah, but when you're dealing with the. I mean, sadly. That would normally be like an issue up here, but it's an issue down here because there's so many other problems right now. Yeah. Uh, before we get on the defense, listen, I took a lot of heat a couple pods ago, okay, when I talked about... Who was giving you heat? Um, we were remain nameless. I, um, I took a lot of heat when we started talking about Presley Harvin. And because I said that, I don't think either the punter was very good, but Harvin's holding ability made him the better punter. With that being said, there's a bad snap that he held that Boswell kicked it through. That's A. But B, give credit where credit's due. He dropped two inside the five. He had, a, he had one of his best games he's ever had. So shout out to Presley Harvin because I think he deserves that. He had an excellent game. I'm glad you said that. I have a couple other special teams notes. The one punt, however... That trickled, 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 bounced out out of bounds right before the end zone. Yeah. That was lucky, man. I hey. Other you, people do it. Why you, can't we? You, you get lucky. Right? Sometimes you get lucky. But that was looked like it was gonna go straight to the end zone. Well, it did. Everyone in, yeah, it didn't, and it was great, and he had a great game. I you gotta give him credit. Yes. He had some other excellent punts. One was a beautiful spiral. Yes, he did. He bombed that one. Um I know we get on him, but we gotta give him credit. credit special teams too. though. Can we uh, talk about it don't <laughs> This was one of the strangest plays I've ever seen watching football in my life. You would have thought this man was in the corner of the end zone trying to get six that the way he put his toes in the sideline. It is, so dumb. It is so dumb on so many levels. What is that? He clearly just doesn't know the rules, doesn't know what to do. If he doesn't play again this year, I'd be very happy about that. I'm, and I hope he's not hurt, and I hope he's cleared from his concussion. I'm not wishing injury on him. I'd just be very comfortable if Gunner does not play the rest of the year. Very comfortable with it. What do you think was going through his head? Is there any possible... So what, what you do in situations like that, and I've seen it done, it mainly happens when the ball's rolling, okay? This very rarely happens when it's in the air. But if the ball's rolling and it's going out of bounds, and you, don't, and you think the ball is going to get to you before it goes out of bounds, what you can do and what you're taught to do is you put one foot outside the sideline, one foot in play. Once you field the ball, you are out of bounds. That is a penalty. 
because the ball went out of bounds because that's where you possess it. What, I've never seen this on a ball that's in the air. What he should have done, just let the ball hit out of bounds. It would have been fine. But if he really wanted to catch it for whatever unknown reasons, he could have put one foot out, one foot in, and caught it. But he toe-tapped it. It's as if he thought he was receiving a punt. I, I've never seen it. Because if like it was a punt and he thought that, okay, this is going to land in bounds, I don't want it to roll down and then down it. That's All a different right, situation. Cool. Still a weird play for a punt because but, but a you're situation. risking not catching it, you're toe-tapping. Right. There's no possible explanation for it to be a kick. Right. That's my point. Especially on a, a kick that's in the air. Because it's either going to go out of bounds in the air or you catch it with your foot out of bounds. We continue, and then and then he knew he he knew he messed up. He tried to said he fair caught it, which that what would be the difference if he fair caught it? It's still the same spot. Would be the only kick in NFL history fair caught out of bounds. Yeah, that way he's the one. There's not. There's no one else has done it. Toe tapped it. I no. mean, a beautiful toe tap too. That was really nice. That was really nice. Like what in the world was going through his mind? That was really just beyond. I hope confusing. he has to play again. No, please, please. All right, let's talk about the defense. Where do we start? What a game, fellas. What a game. Everything we wanted. They gave up 400 yards, which didn't, it just didn't, it never felt like that because they didn't break anything big. Well, the run. Yeah, they broke one big run. A couple other medium runs. The run defense honestly didn't look great. Especially, if, especially when Chubb was in there. If Chubb doesn't get hurt, the Steelers lose that game. The run defense was looking very, very shaky early on. Sure. They picked it up. But everything else, man, really, really strong. I only have one nit to pick. Good. I mean, other than the oh, run defense I, I, I have, mentioned. I have one. I don't know if we're going to say the same thing, but go ahead. It's Levi Wallace. Absolutely. Man, he looked bad. I hate to start this off by being negative, but he's already on my mind. I can't get it out. He doesn't look like he wants to hit anyone. Nope. He doesn't look like he's interested in tackling. You're right about that. That being at the game, you really get to have a feel for that because he, I mean, unfortunately, the way football is filmed, you can't see the secondary. You, right. Yeah, correct. You, it, so, you know, when actually, you're at the game, you see the play develop. I agree. He just doesn't look like he wants to hit anybody. He didn't, certainly didn't want to tackle anybody on that run. <clears throat> no, no. It, it, there's, there's, he's doing a, a very nice Devin Bush impression, which. Yeah. <laughs> You know, from not a good thing. To be it's it's a lot less impactful when you're a corner, but I don't like it. It's not Steelers football. Nope. He's not great at cover. 